Welcome to your graduation ceremony. We are now live on YouTube and your ceremony will begin. Welcome everyone. I've just got to uh, welcome everyone um, to this graduation ceremony. My name is Professor Stella Brutzi and I am Dean of the Faculty of Arts and Humanities and your host today. It's my honour and privilege to welcome you to UCL's 2021 virtual graduation ceremony. I'm delighted to see so many graduates from the departments of uh, European and International Social and Political Studies, Greek and Latin, Hebrew and Jewish studies, and the Department of Philosophy here with us today. And I know that we have many friends and family members watching uh, as well. We hope you are as proud as, as, as we are of this group and, and what they have achieved. Obviously, we wish we could have been celebrating in different circumstances this summer, but until we can celebrate safely together, I'm delighted that we are able to come together to do so virtually today. We will try our very best to replicate the experience you would have had this summer. We will be sharing a short video from our president and provost. Uh, you'll hear speeches from myself, from your heads of department, and we'll also hear from, uh, from an um, alumna towards the end about what life is like after you finish your degree at UCL. But first, a little housekeeping. I'm sure many of us are quite familiar now with, uh, with virtual meetings but it's always easy to, to, to forget. Please do feel free to share messages of congratulations in the chat function at the bottom of your screen, but otherwise please, please stay muted unless called on to unmute. Thank you. Graduands, we will be announcing names and groups. Once your name has been announced, we encourage you to turn your camera on and at the end of each group, we will offer you our congratulations and then ask you to turn your cameras off before we move to the next group. It'll all become clear. Um, now I want to introduce you to our virtual platform party that joins us today to celebrate with you and, uh, and who you can see on your screens. Colleagues, I'm going to come one by one and, and I'll just sort of um, ask you to briefly introduce yourselves, to unmute, sorry, to unmute yourselves, introduce yourselves and say hello to our audience. So who have I got? Uh, Mart. Hi everyone, I'm Dr. Mart Kulkert, the head of department of VISPS, and a warm welcome to all of you. Um, Kyle. Hello everyone, my name is Kyle Schneider and I work in the Dean's office as an assistant Dean at Sciences Po, who participates in the dual degree with UCL. Congratulations to everyone. It's great to see you. Mark Geller. Hello everyone, congratulations. I'm the 
uh, I'm from the Hebrew and Jewish Studies Department, and I'm director of the Institute of Jewish Studies at UCL. Uh, Cecile. Hello, everyone. I'm a representative of Sciences Po as well, and I'm in charge of the dual degree program between Sciences Po and UCL. Congratulations to everyone. Thank you. Tessa. Hello, I'm Tessa Robinson, Programs Manager for European and International Social and Political Studies. My congratulations to everyone present. Daniel. Hello, everyone. I'm Daniel Rothschild. I'm the head of the philosophy department. It's great to see everyone. Um, congratulations. Fiacra. Hello, I'm Fiacra Makoran from the Department of Greek and Latin. Uh, very good to see you all here today, and uh, congratulations to all graduates. Uh, Gazina. Hello, everyone. I'm Gazina Manowald. I'm the head of the Department of Greek and Latin, and I'd like to uh, congratulate all the graduates here today from our department and from all the other ones represented here. Brian? Hi, I'm Brian Kloss. I'm from the EISPS department, and I'd just like to offer my congratulations to everyone today. Julia? Hello, I'm Julia Wagner from EISPS. I'm delighted to be here and to offer my congratulations to everyone. Thank you. And Michael, did you want to, you're sort of hiding behind a photograph, but do you want to say hello, Michael Berkowitz? Oh, thank you very much. I'm, I'm happy to say hello and also would like to welcome and congratulate the graduates. Thank you very much. Now, I hope I haven't missed, missed anyone out, uh, but speak now forever hold your peace, because I'm now going to officially declare this ceremony open and we'll now hear from, from the Provost, uh, Dr. Michael Spence. Hi everyone, I'm Michael Spence, President and Provost of UCL. It gives me great pleasure to welcome you all today to your virtual graduation ceremony, and I'd like to offer my wholehearted congratulations to you as you graduate from UCL and move forward to the next stage of your lives. Of course, I speak to many of you dispersed across the world today. We can agree that this situation isn't and hasn't been ideal, and we'd prefer to celebrate in person, but that doesn't diminish your remarkable achievements in any way. The whole UCL community is behind you, and we're in awe of the resilience that you've shown in the face of the challenges posed by the pandemic. Each of you has shown what you can achieve, even under the most trying circumstances. This year marks the 195th anniversary of UCL's founding, and we continue to base our principles and beliefs on those of Jeremy Bentham, a commitment to social justice and the availability of education to all. At UCL, we've always believed in changing the world for the better, and as graduates, you'll carry that goal forward. You're a part of UCL's history, but just as importantly of its future too, this is not the end of your UCL journey. You're joining an impressive global alumni community of over 300,000 graduates who support and celebrate each other and who go on to achieve remarkable things around the world. UCL and the alumni community is here for you, not only as you take the next step in your career journey, but for life. So thank you, thank you and congratulations. I look forward to a time when we'll be able to come together in person to further celebrate your amazing achievements. Actually, I, uh, we've been joined by a couple more people, uh, or perhaps it's just um, Marigold. I think you missed me asking people to, uh, sim to simply introduce themselves briefly. So before we progress, why don't you do that? Yes, apologies for this. I teach until three and I start again at four. So this is sandwiched between two classes, but I did want to come and uh, congratulate my students in Greek and Latin, which is where I teach a mat, uh, paleography and medieval Latin. So many congratulations to those of you whom I taught and indeed to all the students from Greek and Latin and all the others today here. Marigold, thank you. And thanks for joining us uh, between your classes. So I'm now delighted to welcome Mart Kuldkep, head of the department of EISPS, to present uh, the graduates. Thank you. Mart. Thanks. Am I audible? I am. Okay. 
I'm now delighted to commence the presentation of our graduates, and I have uh, personally pleasure in presenting to you these candidates who have been awarded a Bachelor of Arts in European Social and Political Studies, uh, or social, uh, European Social and Political Studies dual degree. I will do my best, I should say, to pronounce your names correctly, uh, but do, please do forgive me uh, for uh, my uh, failures. So I will now start. Uh, Phyllis Mariam Akalin, Beatrice Sagat Ober, Ken Effi Eidu, Florence Allen Beriswell, Rowan Bainbridge, Pierre Christian Bouchard, Sophia Bougera, Abigail Elizabeth Ann uh, Brooks, Alexander Emil Antoine Wittig Bronstein Compar, Salome Marie Calmo, Christopher George Carling, Lea Paul George Caron, Emma Brigitte Lela Chayou, Manon Colette uh, Annie Claude Chenayet, Lea Elisa Clamadier, Vera Kumur, Elizabeth Grace Davis, Balthasar Delaville de Bush, Dora Sivkova Dimitrova, Orshaya Dobe. And I would now like to pause there uh, and ask my colleagues to unmute and give a round of applause to our esteemed uh, graduates. Congratulations, everyone. Mm. We will now continue with the following candidates who have been awarded a Bachelor of Arts in European Social and Political Studies. George Dubois, Silas Blue Edwards, Armin Ferenczi, Margot Gratien Furcard, Jasmine Emily Alexandra Foxall, Sara Fomenta, Pietra Leona Juna, Virginia Goffredi, Annabelle Lea Lucie Rose Gouache, Clara Marie Gael Gisla, Jonas Gutzeit, Tatiana Andre Anna Heim, Helena Florence uh, Joan Holmes, Matilda Alice Hutchings, Plamen uh, Anatolia Ivanov, Alice Sayana Sharda, Maya Camilla Anciliona uh, Klosterman, Sina Selma Laharbi, Enora Lemas de Germont, Paola uh, Liberati. And again, I would like to pause here and ask my colleagues to unmute and give a round of applause to our esteemed graduates. I will now continue on with the following candidates uh, who have been awarded a Bachelor of Arts in European Social and Political Studies. Charlene Martin Lewis, Lavinia Lucangeli, Yanis Bouzid Vincent Lunetta, Lydia Marchenko, Moise Embarga Abega, Liam Wallace McLean, Constance Miklea, Tudor Morario Prince, Delfina Moresco, Tatiana Mestrenko, Sophie Lara Neuberg, Annamika Odile Elizabeth Normand, Sar Ogut, Elisaveta Orlova, Matteo Partica, Ioana Pencha, Juliette Marie Schinpuel, Florine Lucy Cecile Rouet, Mathieu Ruby, Jérôme Jérôme. And I would like to pause there again and ask my colleagues to unmute and give a round of applause to our esteemed graduates. Team. I will now continue with the following candidates have been awarded a Bachelor of Arts in European Social and Political Studies. 
Sara Saror, Lara Stark, Megan Victoria Wiley Sopcliffe, Helen Guyon Tal, Amelie Marie Caroline Bruchot, Nora Marie Vena, Iris Vialar, Isabella Anna Zavarka, Christophe Louis Bernard Camus, Damion de Rivry, Sukaina Foll, Antoine Christine Michel Lafarge, Miriam Levit, Willem Rudolf Audiens, Carla Rau, Carolina Antonina Stankevich, and Pete uh, Oliver uh, Buchar. And this concludes all our candidates from the Department of European and International Social and Political Studies. And I would now ask the virtual platform party to unmute themselves and give a round of applause to all of our uh, graduates. Done. I also have a short message to all the uh, EISPS uh, graduates uh, on behalf of the department. And uh, I would like to keep it short because I don't need you. I don't think you need uh, another long lecture uh, from me because you've already had those uh, in the past, of course. But I think it's nevertheless a good idea to repeat some basic facts about what you have accomplished so that you get the sense of what it looks like uh, from the other end uh, of the seminar room, uh, or as has more recently, of course, uh, been the case uh, from your lecturers' uh, web cameras. And what I would like to tell you is that you are, and you have always been, the best students uh, one could wish to have uh, as an academic. I'm not saying this lightly. Uh, I remember when I first started at UCL uh, back in autumn 2015, and I met some of your predecessors who were final year students back then, I was just blown away uh, by how good they were. I remember being in their final year presentation seminars and thinking, my God, it's like sitting in a room full of PhD students. They are not like undergraduates at all. And over time, uh, my opinion of EISPS students has not uh, changed at all. This first cohort of finalists that I met back then was not an exception. They were just the first one I had the pleasure of working with. And now you, of course, uh, are the uh, latest one. So why do I like you so much? Um, it is because you are the kind of students who are independent in their choices. You're always ready to face a challenge. You're driven by ambition. And you are always determined to succeed in whatever it is that uh, you are doing. And this is, of course, the reason why you chose your degree with the unprecedented flexibility it offers, you wanted to build your education the way that you like it, as a carefully laid out foundation for your uh, future. And this is uh, what I think you have done uh, during your studies at the ISPS, and this is uh, what you can be uh, proud of. Now, I wish I could give each one of you a bit of time uh, to talk about uh, what you are going to do next. But since there is 77 of you, an impressively large cohort of finalists, Unfortunately, of course, we won't have time uh, to uh, do that. But at least I can guess. Uh, and I guess that many of you will sooner or later undoubtedly go into further study. You will gain an MA, an MSc, uh, or a PhD. You will also embark on careers in national and international politics, in civil service, in NGOs, business, and many other sectors, which will come to benefit from your deep specialist knowledge about the countries that you have studied and the languages that you have learned during your time at UCL, but also from the critical thinking and theoretical insights that you have gained by immersing yourselves in your social science specialisms, whether it be law, international relations, economics, history, or something else uh, that is on offer at uh, EISPS. But most of all, those you will be working with in the future will benefit from your resilience, your independence, and your determination to succeed the qualities that you have already so amply demonstrate, demonstrated during your time here at the ISPS, and which will continue to bring success, not just to you, but also to those uh, around you. I sincerely, sincerely hope that you will fondly remember your time at the ISPS, that you will keep in touch with us as alumni, and that you maybe will once in a while take a moment to reflect uh, on the impact that your time as a student here 
has had not just on your career, but also uh, on yourselves as uh, individuals. It was an immense privilege to have you here uh, with us. And on behalf of the whole department, I would like to wish you the best of luck uh, for the future. Thank you. I'm now delighted to welcome Gesine Manuwald, uh, Head of Department for Greek and Latin, to present the graduates. Thank you very much. I'm now delighted to commence the presentation of graduates from the Department of Greek and Latin. I have the pleasure in presenting to you these candidates who have been awarded a Bachelor of Arts. The following candidates have been awarded a Bachelor of Arts in the Ancient World. Cassandra Adrian Giugi, Sinead Amy Gannon, Emma Ippolito, Emma Catherine McMoran, Eamon Tarek, Leran Witzner. And a Bachelor of Arts in Ancient World with the Year Abroad, Milan Kangye. We continue with the Bachelor of Arts in Classics. Antoine Frederick Raphael Marie Breteau, Elena Josephine Cowan, Mansi Rihanna Dokia, Daniel Alexander Lloyd, Nicholas Everett Lockett, Katrina Louis Millet, Armadi Repiska, Max Oliver Jack Robertson, Joseph Witten Salter, Adam Mohamed Sulman. Bachelor of Arts in Classics for Study Abroad, Jake Lawrence van Grieken. And a Bachelor of Arts in Latin and English, Elizabeth Rose Gabertis. I'd like to pause here and ask my colleagues to unmute themselves and give a round of applause to our esteemed graduates. We move on to our postgraduate candidates. The following candidates have been awarded a Master of Arts in Classics. Poppy Alexandra Batty, Michael Alexander Anthony Dyer, Mia Caitlin Singby, and a Master of Arts in Reception of the Classical World, Paige Zoe Hill, Nee Lee, Rachel Nizi, Angeliki Zervo. That concludes all of our candidates from the Department of Greek and Latin. I would ask again that the virtual platform party all unmute themselves and give a round of applause to all of our esteemed graduates. I too have a personal message on behalf of the department for all our graduates. First of all, I'd like to reiterate congratulations to everyone from myself and the entire Department of Greek and Latin. Completing a degree, whether BA, MA or PhD is always an achievement and especially in the current circumstances. Having reached this milestone in your careers, you can be really proud of yourselves and confidently move on to the next steps in your lives, whatever they are. The ancient Greek historiographer Thucydides Thucydides said about his historical work that it would not just be entertainment for the moment, but a possession forever. In a way, such a statement also applies to a degree. You'll be able to benefit from that forever. You have now learned so much about the ancient world so that whenever you feel like it, for instance, after an exhausting day in any job that you might start now, you can take a classical Greek or Latin text and be inspired by reading it. Of course, what we are reading are texts from the ancient world and written in a different framework. For instance, without awareness of contemporary issues of society and political correctness. But nevertheless, the same Thucydides, for example, wrote about the pest in Athens. Others have written about philosophical views on death, how one should organize one's life, about love affairs and other relationships between people, the best form of a constitution for a state and so on. 
That's the themes you find in these texts not only tell you where a lot of ideas still current today come from, but they also inspire you constantly to reflect on current issues with some critical distance. Moreover, reading and engaging with ancient texts should have provided you with a lot of transferable skills. To cite another example, the early Roman author Cato is reported to have said, get hold of the topic and the words will follow. That means make sure that you know what you're talking about and then you'll easily be able to do so. So that means you should now have the ability to find out information about almost any topic and then be able to talk about it uh, uh, formally in line with Cato's statement. And of course, with a degree of classics under your belt, you can now go out into the world and be an ambassador for the subject. It is obvious that there's a lot of interest in the ancient world among the general population. Whenever there's a blockbuster exhibition on, say, Troy, or an exciting documentary or film including ancient material on TV or in cinemas, audience numbers are large, and a good number of parents would like their children to learn something about the ancient world, and that's the early history of Europe. Unfortunately, as we know, not all schools in the UK and also in other countries are able to offer that provision. Thus, as you are now able to talk about the excitement of the ancient world to family, friends, and work colleagues, you might inspire some to take up the opportunity and engage more with classics or lobby for my widespread introduction. Some of you might have already taken part in some of our outreach events for young people. Since we assume that your interest in classics will continue even after leaving UCL, you'll be pleased to learn that you remain part of the UCL Classics community as the department's alumni. We send regular newsletters to all our alumni and invite them to events such as the annual Greek play, in which some of you might have start, at the Hausmann lecture or conferences. Please register as alumni and keep your eyes open for emails from the department. We also welcome visitors at any time, as well as messages from our alumni. In fact, we are keen to hear how you're getting on. And we also welcome offers of support for our current students. To close again with another quotation, the Roman orator and politician Cicero, an author on whom I've done quite a bit of research and will have taught some of you, allegedly said that books and a nice place to sit down to read is all one needs. And elsewhere he commented that he had just finished writing something and if it did not please, he would throw it away and write it again in a different format since he simply could not do nothing. If you take this as your motto, if you always keep busy and do something useful and also engage with a lot of literature for inspiration, you cannot go wrong and you should pass through life well. In that sense, congratulations again and all the best for your future careers from Greek and Latin. I'm delighted to welcome now Professor Mark Geller, Director of the Institute of Jewish Studies to present the next round of graduates. And I am delighted on my part to commence the presentation of our graduates. I have pleasure in presenting to you these candidates who have been awarded a Bachelor of Arts or a Master of Arts. The following candidates, the candidate has been awarded a Bachelor of Arts in Ancient Languages, Mansour Ahmad Dahri. Bachelor of Arts in Hebrew and Jewish Studies, Shulamit Hanna Raymond. A Bachelor of Arts in Hebrew and Jewish Studies with a Year Abroad, Michael Francis Hewitt McIson. We now move to our postgraduate candidate. The following candidate has been awarded a Master of Arts in Jewish Studies, Zachary Andrew Carruthers. We now turn to the successful candidate for the degrees of Doctor of Philosophy. Doctoral candidates undertake a program of independent research over at least three years. They must demonstrate a capacity to pursue original based thought and action and provide a distinct contribution to their subject. A research degree requires total commitment and is at the very pinnacle of academic study. 
I have pleasure in presenting to you the following candidate who has been awarded the degree of Doctor of Philosophy in Jewish and Military History, Dr. Jonathan Malcolm Lewis. For the Doctor of Philosophy in Politics and Modern History, Dr. Jonathan Jacques Gariani. That concludes all of our candidates from the Department of Hebrew and Jewish Studies. I would ask that the virtual platform party all unmute themselves and give a round of applause to all of our graduates. <laughs> I would like to give a very short personal message on behalf of the department. And that's this, that, that the range of topics and interests of all of the graduates of the department shows, that, shows something about the department itself. And in a sense, you've been very lucky to be able to study in all aspects of Hebrew and Jewish studies and all related areas in the context of a secular university environment. And Jewish studies in this sense, in the way it's taught at UCL represents a cross section of all of the humanities with interests in languages. Some six languages are taught in the department, interests in history, interest in classics, ancient history, interested in uh, connections with the school of uh, Eastern European and Slavic studies and uh, philosophy, all of these areas are relevant to the department and we and and uh, and all of these areas are reflected in the kind of work that you have been doing at all levels and i'm very pleased to see that all levels of academic achievement are represented among this year's graduates so i just want to say that on behalf of the department we wish you much success and that we hope that the training that you have received and the kind of education you have received over the past few years will not only prepare you for your professional life, but will also form the basis of your own personal life and commitment to your future endeavors. So it's my pleasure now to uh, introduce Professor Daniel Rothschild, Head of Department for Philosophy to represent the graduates from the Department of Philosophy. Thank you. I'm now delighted to present the, our graduates. So I have the pleasure to present you these candidates first, who have been um, a Bachelor of Arts or a Master of Arts. Now, first, the following candidates have been award, awarded a Bachelor of Arts in Philosophy. Yan Chung Chen, Zuyi Chen, Rebecca D'Souza, India Page Caitlin Griffiths, Samuel Thomas O. Jones, Matilda Maria of Klanuski, Henry Frederick Walker Luckoff, Sylvia B. McCower, Chun Hei Dylan Nan, Timothy Luke Oswald, Laura Alexandra Patterson, Mohammed Hussein Ramtula. Juan Luis Ridao Alonso, Kristen Kalong Tang, Jared Mencheng Tang, Bronte Ajane Ayana Teal, Sarah Margaret White, Scarlett Alexis Elizabeth Willis, Gauzi Zhu, Wing Lam Yuan. I would like to pause there and ask my colleagues to unmute and give a round of applause to our esteemed graduates. Congratulations. We continue on with the following candidates who have been awarded the Bachelor of Arts in Philosophy and Economics. Hin Feng Ho, Fuang Han Ho, Song Uk Park, Cameron Daniel Shik. And now the candidates who have the Bachelor of Arts in Philosophy and History of Art. Simon Jean Noé Bastard-Philippe, Chin Y. Chin, 
Fim Kim Lim. Mikhail Tomzak. We now move on to our postgraduate candidates. The following candidates have been awarded the Master of Arts in Philosophy. Anna Bruvier, Annabelle Louise Salisbury, Jing Xuan Young. Now the following candidates have been awarded a Master in Philosophical Studies in Philosophy, the MPhil. Chun Yu Lai, Elena Silvia Ludovica Ramondi. This concludes all of our candidates from the Department of Philosophy. I would ask that the virtual platform all unmute themselves and give a round of applause to our esteemed graduates. <laughs> now, I'm gonna give a short um, message to you. Um, th there's a strong tradition in philosophy of finding comfort and escape in the subject. Um, we see this theme in the very beginning of Western philosophy or towards the beginning with Socrates facing execution, arguing that the soul is immortal, uh, certainly a kind of consolation. Um, and some philosophers ha have written great works while um, it, it, it imprisoned, um, a habit that philosophers seem to have of getting imprisoned. Um, so notable examples include um, Boethius and uh, Jean-Paul Sartre, um, Bertrand Russell, another imprisoned philosopher, wrote that philosophy's chief value comes through, quote, the greatness of the objects which philosophy contemplates and the freedom from narrow and personal aims resulting from this contemplation, unquote. Uh, I have to say, it's very useful to believe that thinking is the best way to spend your time when you have no other option but to think, which is indeed what your situation is when you're imprisoned. Um, but I've always thought this theme of philosophy as an escape from a real or imagined situation, a, 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 a prison, is not particularly one that's relevant to you, the students of philosophy. You mostly come to philosophy for a love of learning, not a need of an, a genuine interest in the ideas and and um, arguments that dominate the field and not from a need to comfort yourself in the face of some kind of external um, adversity. The COVID pandemic, however, turned the experience of being a student upside down, severely curtailing liberties at a time of life when they are valued the most. And I do hope that like generations of philosophers before you, you have found some solace in philosophy, some comfort in the um, contemplation of what Russell, um, you know, um, calls the great objects that philosophy um, focuses on. You can find that comfort even if you don't agree with Russell, as I don't, that the objects of philosophy are the sort of noblest and best ones and personal and narrow um, aims are not the most important, are, are, are somehow less important than the, um, the philosophical life. But I would hope that in this time, the kind of intellectual freedom has provided some kind of compensation for the loss of personal freedom. But regardless of whether it has or not, what you have done and what you should really appreciate now is you've persevered and really excelled in incredibly challenging times, unprecedented, as so many people say these days, for, um, as a way of study. And you have mine and the whole department's congratulations and our admiration as well. Um, so stay in touch and um, good luck. Oh, before turning off my video, I should say that I'm now invited, uh, I, I'm now delighted to invite our Dean back, um, Professor Stella Bruzzi to give her faculty address. Daniel and colleagues, thank you. Um... A really heartfelt well done to all of today's graduates and a thank you from the faculty and from UCL for uh, um, all my colleagues here on the virtual platform this afternoon. Just hitch up my, my gown. Um, graduation, even in these weird circumstances, is always one of my favourite points in the academic calendar. I never failed to be, to be moved by it and to see all of you graduate through, through your degrees is a wonderful moment. 
As we've seen today, a graduation is an exciting moment of transition and of celebration of what you've achieved at university, the friendships you've forged, the futures you've started to build and are now embarking upon. Your part as today's ceremony beautifully exemplified uh, of a rich, diverse, a richly diverse and multidisciplinary community. So a bit about the faculty you've been part of. The Faculty of Arts and Humanities at UCL has produced a multitude of successful and notable alumni, from artists Paula Rago and Rachel Whiteread to, to Labour MP Tulip Sadiq, to Hollywood director Christopher Nolan, to Chris Martin of Coldplay, a graduate of Greek and Latin, and writer and comedian Ricky Gervais, a graduate of the Department of Philosophy. We are proud of all our alumni who, who, who make us what we are. And, you know, we, we, we do regularly, and we're proud of this as well, come in the top 10 of global rankings for the arts and humanities and remain hugely important to the culture and heritage of, of, of UCL. Three of the university's four founding professors, for, for instance, came, were, were in our subjects. And the torch has now been passed on to you you're all part of this rich heritage of innovation, academic excellence, and creativity. If you think of life as the narrative, then consider how your time at UCL has now become integrated into your life script. I hope, as many of the heads of department have already said, that, that you will stay in touch with us and also with each other. This is a strange but hugely important time to graduate, to enter a world because of the pandemic, still very much dominated by a by, by politics and science. As you navigate that world, however, I urge you now to reflect on how important the arts, humanities and culture are, what they bring, what they add, what they have and can achieve in terms of not just livelihoods, but to lives, society and community. Medicine gives you life, but culture makes life worth living, I always think. It feeds the soul and makes us who we are. Just as they were central to UCL's founding mission, so the arts and humanities remain fundamental to the successful functioning of our society today. The subjects you've, you've studied will help you to understand yourself, our society and our place in the world. The human at the heart of humanities is vital. What are some of the core skills you've acquired that, that you will now take with you into your brave new post-university world? You've all done very different degrees, taken different pathways and have run with different specialisms, but there are, I, I would propose, some common threads to link you all. You will have learned, for instance, to be excellent communicators. You'll have mastered the art of clear thinking and will be consummate researchers of words, images, emotions, and ideas. You won't just have learned to be questioning, but how to question and challenge meaningfully and how to analyze language, images, data, evidence. Your degrees will have equipped you to be skilled at, at also working with others, how to listen, for example, as well as how to argue a point. That's not merely about getting your point of view across forcefully and clearly, but about being able to engage meaningfully with those who take different points of view or have different attitudes. You'll have become sensitive to cultural context and learned important skills in, in, in diplomacy and negotiation. As students of the humanities, you'll have a deep appreciation, I hope, for the value of tone and inflection, for the idea, as, as, uh, as Roland Barthes once observed, that the space between the notes are often as important and as resonant uh, with, with meaning as the notes themselves. Every problem that needs solving requires a human dimension. Just think of the crises that swirl around us now. And when thinking about value, many of us conceive of value in economic terms, but there is immense and perhaps unquantifiable value also in the skills you have and which I've touched on just now. So leave university as active and engaged citizens. Contribute to arts and culture, our society and the world, and help us navigate our way together to a better future. Now, Voyager, sail thou forth to seek and find. Many congratulations on your outstanding achievements. As Dean of the Faculty, I now have the pleasure of formally conferring your degrees. In a moment, we are going to hear from, from one of our alumni members. 
and a, and a bit about her. Sophie Tate completed a Bachelor of Arts in Scandinavian Studies with, with Management Studies at UCL in 2001. Sophie is a global media executive who currently holds the position of Director of Production Strategy and Operations for the world's largest subscription streaming service, Netflix, in, 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 in Los Angeles, having relocated from London in 2017 to build out the production management teams for local language programming in Europe, the Middle East, Africa and, and, and Latin America. After graduating from UCL, Sophie went on to work for online retailer lastminute.com as the travel auctions head during their early startup years, before moving to the BBC for a very diverse and rewarding 15 year career across global television, radio, online and event production around the world. Hi, I'm Sophie Tate. I studied Scandinavian studies with management studies in the Faculty of Arts and Humanities at UCL. And whilst I might not have realised at the time, learning languages and understanding how businesses run has really helped set me up for success in my career in global TV and film production. So I now lead a team supporting content being produced in over 190 countries for the global streaming service Netflix here in Los Angeles. I'm delighted to be celebrating with you today as you graduate from one of the world's leading universities. Now that's no small feat in a typical year, and this has been anything but a typical time. Your resilience, adaptability and patience you've honed during this unique moment in time alongside the world-class education from UCL will serve you incredibly well in the years to come. So huge congratulations to you all. Now your learning doesn't end here, so continue to challenge convention, disrupt the status quo and think bigger. Stay curious, keep that open mind as you seek to understand and turn theory from UCL into reality in whatever you go on to do next. You know great ideas can come from anyone, anywhere. And as London's global university, UCL has set you up with a wonderfully diverse perspective and an incredible network. The world is smaller than you think, and now is your time to influence it. Continue to collaborate, cooperate and contribute to this amazing network. There are over 300,000 alumni just like me to partner with. So make the most of that. Look for ways to help the many and find others who are doing the same thing. You'll make a bigger impact and you'll have a lot more fun. How you do all of this really matters. So be kind, generous with your time and celebrate the successes of those around you, just as we're doing today. But wherever you are in the world, celebrating this graduation success, I wish you all the very best for the future. Congratulations, very well done. You've really earned this moment. Now, before we, we, we close this afternoon's ceremony, let's have one final round of applause for all of our graduates. <laughs> Hugely well done. Ladies and gentlemen, friends and family, and most importantly, our graduates, that concludes our virtual graduation ceremony. I offer you my wholehearted congratulations and my very best wishes for the future. Thank you. <laughs>